I'm Patrick Hurley. Um, I am the area manager for the RSA. Uh, the Royal Society of Arts is its shortened name, um, full name, the Royal Society for the Encouragement of Arts, Manufacturers and Commerce. But obviously that doesn't fit on a business card or a, an email address, so RSA it is. Um, I'm going to give a talk, a bit of a whistle-stop tour of the history of the RSA. And the talk's going to be in three parts, so a bit of a history. And then one of the projects that we're working on, which is called 100 Ideas for the North. Um, and then I'm going to leave you with a request, a call to action. Um, I'm hoping it's only going to take about 10, 15 minutes at most. And I'm sure the metaphorical hook off the stage will be... Um, We'll, we'll, we'll be much in evidence if I talk for much longer than that. So, right, here goes. Um, RSA, um, it's a fantastic organisation, but I would say that because I work there. But it is, even if I, even if I didn't work there. Um, formed in 1754 in a coffee house in central London. So you can kind of picture it. It's like Enlightenment era London. There's all sorts of societies being formed. The scientists have got a royal society. The, you know, the the, the lords are getting reformed. Loads of stuff's going on. There's gentlemen's clubs being set up left, right, and centre. And the great and the good of London, they've all got their own little organisations. They've all got their own specific remits. And then this guy comes along, William Shipley, and he says, I want to set up my own society. And you can imagine the kind of people that he gets there in the coffee house. Um, He's got a Viscount. He's got a Bishop. It's a it sounds like the start of a joke, this, doesn't it? There's a Viscount, a Bishop, and a banker walks into a room. And you can imagine, this is 1754. These are the most powerful men in the country. Member of the House of Lords. You've got, mem you've got somebody from the church there. And in this context, when you put these people in the same room together, it's a kind of a combustible mix, because you don't know quite what you're going to end up with. Are they going to end up with insults flying and challenging challenging each other to a duel? Are they going to do something where they say, well, okay, that's a great idea. We'll put some money behind it and by accident kickstart the Industrial Revolution. And actually, they did both. Um, because sometimes the stars just align. And you, you never quite know where the seeds you're going to scatter will land. But... They landed in the right order for the RSA. Um, so this guy, William Shipley, he'd, he'd been to Dublin and he liked the, this idea of this, uh, this uh, society he'd seen in Dublin called the Society for Improving Husbandry. And he says, yeah, I'm going to do one of them when I get back to London. So he calls it for the Society for the Encouragement of Arts, etc. And it's got a pretty broad remit. Essentially, they just created this society to be able to allow themselves to stick their oar in and get things, get, get stuck in and just make all sorts of things a little bit better. And 250 odd years later, that's still the sort of thing that the RSA does. So I'm going to give you a little few um, examples of the sort of stuff that we've worked on over the years. And obviously, I will take personal credit for all of these things, um, because despite having only worked there for 10 months, they all are thanks to me. Um, one of the first things that we, we, we helped to bring about, um, the, the kind of the remit we've got is that we use business models to solve social problems, and we, we try to make things better. And so we came up in the 1700s with a competition, with a, 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 a kind of a contest to solve one of the pressing social problems of the day. And this pressing social problem was that little boys used to get stuck up chimneys. And so we came up with this competition and we offered a bit of money for the best idea to solve the problem of little boys getting stuck up chimneys. And would you believe that the, 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 the winner of the prize came up with this invention of a hollow tube with some brushes in it. And you think, well, obviously, that's how you clean chimneys. But someone's got to have invented it. And it was thanks to one of our 
one of our prizes that that prize was that that um, invention came about. Another thing that we had a hand in was the extendable ladder. The idea of having a ladder with a hook on it so that you can just extend it to twice its length. Again, that came about because one of the prizes that we offered. And if you want a kind of an analogy to 2022, it's kind of like venture capital for social enterprise. Um, we put money behind these things and we, we encouraged people to innovate. And it, that's kind of still what we do. Um, other things that we did, um, if you failed your exams at school, it's the RSA's fault because we created the first standardized examinations in the country. I think it was like 1880s or something. Um, you may have heard of the OCR exam board. Well, the R stands for RC, R RSA. Um, and there's been other things along the, uh, over the years that we've been involved in and that we've catalyzed. And we're still doing that. So I'll give you some examples from across the north of England of the sorts of things that our fellows do. We're a membership body. We've got three and a half thousand fellows across the north. 30,000 across the globe and they're kind of at the forefront of that sort of stuff so social innovations we've got one fellow in Leeds uh, Rob Greenland he runs a thing called Empty Homes Doctor and over the past nine years he's worked with the city council and housing associations and private landlords bringing back into use empty properties we all know that you know if you if you live in a city there's void properties there's there's houses with windows boarded up and Budley are growing out the roof. And Rob has worked with a team to bring over 800 properties in Leeds back into use. And it's the right thing to do to solve the housing crisis. It's the right thing to do to improve the aesthetics of the, of the places where people live. And the city council is chuffed to bits as well because they get the, the council tax revenue coming in. Um, you can imagine 800 properties each paying over a thousand pound council tax each year over the past nine years. They're really pleased. Um, you may be aware of Tracy Fishwick runs the People's Powerhouse um, set up in 2017. She's one of our fellows set this thing up in 2017 in a fit of peak at the fact that Northern Powerhouse had about 20 middle-aged white men on a stage that was not reflecting what the North of England actually looks like. Um, and what the People's Powerhouse now do, they run annual conventions and they have done for the past five years and they give a platform to thousands of people whose stories usually get missed out of the national discourse. Uh, you may well have heard of Incredible Edible. Um, they've got uh, chapters and branches all across the country. Uh, Pam, who set up Incredible Edible about 15, 16 years ago now, she's one of our fellows. Um, and that's, there's now 150 autonomous in, incredible edible groups across the country. So you can kind of see the sort of thing that the RSA tries to catalyze, the sort of thing that our members try to get involved in themselves and try to do themselves. Which brings me to the second part of what I'm going to talk about which is this thing called 100 Ideas for the North. And you know that thing that sometimes different threads of your life weave together eventually without you even realising it? Well, I, I've had a book on my bookshelf for the past 10 years, and it's this book. I brought, brought a prop. I don't know if you can see that or if it's all blurry. It's called 100 Innovative Ideas for Florida's Future. I got it in one of those bargain bins that they have in the works. And it's by Marco Rubio. You might know the, the Republican Senator. Um, and his 100 innovative ideas for Florida's future and other sorts of things that you might expect Marco Rubio to come out with. They are, let's cut teachers pay to make them work harder. Let, let's, let's extend the probationary term for, for nurses and doctors and that, all that sort of stuff. And, I, I wasn't actually taken with any of the ideas. I was just taken with the concept of having a, a nice round figure of a hundred ideas for a specific place. And this book's been on my bookshelf since 2012. And then when I joined the RSA last year, I thought, 
what can we do? I mean, it's a bit of a gimmick, obviously. Everything can be a little bit of a gimmick, and it's nice to have gimmicks. But I thought, what can we do across the north of England that will energise some of our fellowship and energise some of the social innovation that we work on? So I came up with this thing called 100 Ideas for the North, shamelessly taken from the same concept that Senator Rubio uh, put in place back in 2006. And some of the ideas we've come up with so far, and I'll talk about the methodology. There's myself and a couple of other people who go town to town, city to city, running workshops. And we ask people, what are your ideas for the North? Um, and we've been doing this now for about six or seven months. And to be honest, it's a, it's a, it's a nice way to get out on a Saturday lunchtime. We got, we've been off to Wakefield and Huddersfield. We've been to Newcastle and crew and we've been all around the north and it's it's nice to see different places and, and pick up a sense of what people's priorities are and where they are where they live some of the things that people have come out with um they are very much in keeping with what the rsa has traditionally done and what i'm then looking to crowdsource and say what can we then help to bring about in reality so i'll talk a couple of ideas um I've just got a list here. A tool library in every town. You know that thing where you go to B&Q for that one, one tool that you never use again because you, because you all you ever wanted, you didn't actually want a screwdriver. You wanted the screw in the wall. And so you buy the screwdriver and then you put it in, you, you do the job and then you put it in your, in, 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 you never see it again. So a tool library is just this communal library for things like tools and things that, you know, if you if you need your lawn mowing once a month during the summer, you only need a lawn mower once a month, so you can go and borrow it. And so someone's come up with this idea of a tool library in every town. On a similar but slightly more surreal note, someone came up came up with a human library, and um, the idea being that you take a human out of the library, uh, like you would a book. Um, slightly left field. Uh, but what they've said is um, you can kind of register as being a human in a library and people can then have a, a way of contacting you and for an hour a month or whatever you 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 go out and you you are the the kind of the commodity that people lend out of the library essentially it's a way of keeping people company and it's reducing loneliness and bringing more um, sense of community involved and I just liked the idea that people could put themselves in a library and be borrowed for an hour a month. And so that's going to go on the list. Um, fair free public transport. So um, there's this move across Europe, um, Luxembourg, Malta, Estonia, I believe. And I believe there's something similar just taking place in Germany. Um, making public transport free of charge at the point of use to encourage transition to uh, a, a low carbon um, way of moving around the country. I don't know the economic stack up, but I think it's a great idea. And I think it's the sort of thing that we should be seeing more of. And um, and as I know, I know a lot of you are in and around Liverpool. One of the things that has been suggested and which as I sit here in my spare room in Egbeth, I can 100% get behind is to remove all the charges for crossing the Mersey. Um, the two road tunnels and the two bridges over in Runcorn, they all charge. I mean, even the, the Warburton Toll Bridge still charges you 12 pence if you, if you ever get over there, as done for 100 odd, 100 odd years. I think they should all be free of charge. And someone actually came out with this idea when we were in Birkenhead in one of these workshops. And I couldn't not put it in the list. So these 100 ideas that we're collating over the course of 2022, the idea is hopefully the concept we're going to get, going to put them all in a, in a list. We're going to put them all in a book, have it published, fingers crossed, early 2023, and promote the idea that people should go off out and implement them themselves because these are crowdsourced these are not my things that i've come up with myself these are things that people have said to me in workshops across the north so hopefully they'll resonate 
and hopefully they'll be in keeping with the RSA's founding ethos and mission of social innovation and making sticking our oar in and making things a little bit better. So that's the second bit of the talk over and the last bit, and you'll be very pleased to hear this ain't gonna last very long at all, is a request and a call to action. What's your idea for the North of England? What's your thing that you'd like to see that you think, you know, that I, I've always wanted X to happen? Well, now's your chance because one of the ways that we're collating these 100 ideas is through a Google form. And I am going to pop in the chat a link to the Google form. So there you go. If anybody who's on the call and is not watching back from the from the stream, if anybody's on the call would like to click in there and let me know what your idea for the North is. There's a good chance it might end up in a book next year. And there's a good chance that when the RSA publish it, if they do, that you'll get credited as a contributor. Um, and fingers crossed, someone might see that, that idea in that book. And it might be on someone's bookshelf for 10 years, like Marco Rubio's book was with me. But in 10 years time, they may well pick that book up and go, you know, time's right. I'm going to do that now because you never know what the combustible mix might be that you turn up in a coffee shop with the right person at the right time. And you never quite know that if you scatter some seeds, something will come back and something will just just take flight. So let me have your ideas. Let me see where you, what you, what you want to do across the north of England. And with a bit of luck, um, we'll see them implemented. Right, that's enough from me. Back over to you, Mary.